dead, but this is a funeral home. You're fired, Penny. Well, you can't fire me. I quit. You can't quit, Mrs. Stowood. I just fired you. My quitting is retroactive, boss. How's that taste? What is up, everybody, and welcome to a very special edition of Nintendo Guru Daily. I am Bobby, the Nintendo Guru, and today I am joined by my video game reviewer extraordinaire, Mr. Tim Ulf. Tim, how are you doing today? Doing great. How about yourself, Bobby? I, I am very well. So today we have the pleasure of reviewing the game Flipping Death, um, and we're going to basically have a discussion about it. I just want to let people know up front that um, I have withdrawn from any part of the scoring of this game. I am not a part of the scoring on this game. This is strictly all Tim's uh, feelings and all that. Just because of the fact that like, I am in the game, um, I want full disclosure. I don't want people to be like, oh, well, you gave it this score because of that. And that's not the case at all. Uh, Tim is completely held responsible on any good scores or bad scores on this one. Not me. Just so we know and we're clear. I feel all the weight on my shoulders. <laughs> as as you should, as you should. Tim, you ready for this? Yes, I am ready when you are. Sir. Okay, so first of all, Flipping Death. For those who don't know what Flipping Death is, Flipping is basically essentially a 2D side-scrolling uh, puzzle platformer from Zoink Games. The storyline is essentially there's a girl and her boyfriend. You're on a date night or whatever. She leaves her jobs, quits her jobs. And they're going through on the trip, and she winds up uh, killing herself. Spoilers, you know, but it's the very beginning of the game, so it is what it is. Uh, not suicide. Yeah, not suicide. No, that's not suicide. <laughs> You'll see how she dies. But then she, when she's in death mode, she's not sure she's in death mode, and she runs into the Grim Reaper. And the Grim Reaper basically thinks that she is his new assistant, and he's been wanting a vacation for all these years. He hands over everything to her. And then poof, he disappears. So then you're left with his cohort at that time. And she's supposed to train you and teach you what's going on. And that's where the game leads you to go. And so the other thing that I feel like with this game is, is an aspect of the sixth sense where you are kind of playing the little boy's role and Bruce Willis's role at the same time where you are in the dead but you're also trying to figure out how these other characters die to get them to be peaceful and move on to the other world so that's a kind of an aspect that i really like about this game and i think it's pretty pretty ingenious what they did there so let's start from the top what when did, when did this game release august 7th okay when it released on uh of course the eShop okay and other areas and it was re released for 19 dollars 99 here in the u.s not sure how much it is in the other areas but... yeah um, it probably in other areas it's it's more expensive or less depending on where you are. Like Europe is probably a little bit less. Uh, Canada is probably a lot more. That's just how yeah. things are up there. They'll get um, it for three hundred. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so, where else can people get this game other than the Nintendo Switch? Uh, it's on all the consoles and and also on PC through Steam. Nice, nice. Um, and I don't believe there was any demos available for this. It was just straight up. You know, you can buy it and that's it. Um, Correct. Just, at least, uh, for, for sure, not in the eShop. There's no demos. Yeah, no. Um, single player game. There is no co op in this one. The control types and supported play modes. What do you. We know we can use the Pro Controller on this, Joy Cons, obviously. What, what ways did you feel comfortable playing this game? Was it like handheld or. or, or... So for me, I'm, I'm mainly a handheld switch user okay so um but i did play it to in my dock as well for a mm -hmm. little bit mm -hmm. looks great on the tv yeah. uh but mainly just wherever i am in the house or i take it to work with me too so how did you like then. how did you like how it looked in uh in handheld mood it, beautiful i mean just overall the graphics is just beautiful uh i mean it looks great on the small screen, but when you get it on the bigger screen as well, it's it's just a beautiful, graphically, it's just beautiful. I, I, I love the graphics on this. Yeah, it, it, it definitely, it's crisp. Um, I played it in handheld and in, in 
t uh, television mode and or dock mode. And it's basically, it holds up both ways. And it's such a beautiful game, in my opinion. Like, I really felt like they did a great job with the graphics on this thing. Yeah, it has a kind of a 3D feel to it in a way to me almost as if you were on your 3ds playing it and had 3d mode on just yeah. the way they had some of the background and the forward images going it was great so this game is from zoink games they're a great developer based out of uh, sweden they're an indie developer but they just formed this new company along with image and form which a lot of people know them from such games as uh, steamworld dig one and two and same world heist but the new company is called thunderful thunderful is basically going to become like the publisher side of things and they're going to operate the two studios under them independently and they'll still kind of do what they were doing for all these years so the way that we're going to get into the scoring now so the way that we basically broke this down is we're going to do this in four categories uh graphics music gameplay fun factor then we're going to take them scores, and it's going to average an overall score, and that will be the way we score it. The scores will be based between the numbers 1 and 10, and we'll go from there. So, graphics, Tim, what, uh, wh where do you stand with the graphics on this? Well, as I mentioned before, I, I really think the graphics are phenomenal, and I so I gave it a 10. Nice. Uh, again, based on just being able to go in handheld mode, and it looked beautiful, and go on the TV, and it looked beautiful. Um, and just, again, had that 3D feel to it where you didn't need 3D glasses or mm -hmm. the 3DS way of doing 3D. It was yes. just great. Let's just roll right into music. What, what was your thoughts on the music here? So the music, uh, the soundtrack, I if really didn't notice it, which is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's It's got a nice, subtle soundtrack mm -hmm. to go with the gameplay. Mm -hmm. And... You know, some games can get into the music piece a little too much where it could be take away from the story or the gameplay. Yeah. This was just a nice, nice soundtrack in the background while I was playing the game. And what would you score the music? I gave it a nine. Okay. Okay. Now, gameplay, obviously, that's controls and, and, you know, did you find the game clunky or fluid or whatever? So we'll throw that to you now. What was your thoughts on the gameplay of this of this one? The controls were kind of like a little bit of fun and silly in a way, especially when you had to take control of someone. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, it kind of reminded me a little bit of the game I just played and reviewed for Manual Samuel, where you had to con take control of your own body. Mm -hmm. So, but it was, it was really fun and, like I said, fun and silly to be able to go into someone listen to their thoughts and they thought you were, you know, either their inner monologue or mm -hmm. their uh, conscience or whatever. Yeah. And you could hear what they were thinking and, and it, it gives it a different spin, like different from other RPGs, if you will, where you go and hit A and talk to somebody. Yeah. You can actually go in there and kind of hear their thoughts. Yeah. Hear the, what's going on in the area and oh. stuff like that so i thought it was really clever but one other piece to that to the yeah. gameplay is besides just taking over the pe people the the platforming piece there were some difficult areas where it seemed the jumps were kind of tricky mm -hmm. so um i had to learn a new way of kind of jumping other than just you know jumping across to one platform the platform and if you got bigger gaps i discovered a way to use the scythe mm -hmm. to be able to throw it and then toss yourself to the scythe while yes. it was across. so yeah. I thought that was really cool it has this weird mechanic well not weird it's pretty cool and ingenious mechanic I think where you could throw the scythe it sticks into something and then you could teleport yourself to the scythe so what Tim was basically saying is if he had a gap to jump and it was bigger than normal he could jump as far as he could throw the scythe it would stick somewhere and then hit the, the teleport and it would shoot him up to that area where he needed to go so what, what kind of score are we giving the gameplay here so the gameplay, I actually gave an eight, okay. just because there were some frustrating moments with the gameplay, with the controls. Okay. Um, and maybe it's just on my end where it was maybe not enough instruction on how to do certain things, mm -hmm. but uh, it was still pretty good. Huh? Okay. So fun factor is basically, obviously, how much fun did you have playing the game? And and you know, not to I don't want to change your thing, so I'll let you go first and discuss like what you what your feelings were behind the game playing. Sure. And overall, it's just, I'm having a great time with this game. I'm having a lot of fun. Yes, there's some frustrating moments, but that's going to come with any type of platforming game. So yeah. uh, 
Fun factor, I gave it an 8. Okay, so just to recap, you gave the graphics a 10, you gave the music a 9, and then you gave both the gameplay and the fun factor an 8. So we're looking at an 8.75 score for this game, which is very good. I, I feel like it's definitely a worthy of a buy. I think everybody should buy this game. I think that it is really a lot of fun. For my takeaways is this, is I feel like the graphics were wonderful. It's like watching, a, looking at a painting play. It is so good and in depth. The art style is quirky and, and fun. It's It kind of gives that Tim Burton vibe, uh, that type of art style. Great comparison. Yes, and I so I love the way the game looks. Musically, I'm a fan of the music. I love their their, their music in a lot of other games, and, and I'm very interested in the gameplay. Again, I too found a lot of like little frustrating parts where like I just trying to learn new mechanics was the way it was, and just trying to figure out like how far can I throw the scythe, and did I remember that I threw the scythe prior, and right. it still stuck stuck someplace, and that's just me. That's user fail, not anything else. And right. then the fun well, factor. Well, they don't hold your hand either. No, they don't. They don't hold your hand, which I like. And um, and then the fun factor, I, I definitely had a lot of fun. So I, I definitely agree with your scoring. I think that uh, that it's a, a, a very good score, and I'm very happy with the number that's on there. So I couldn't. Uh, if I saw that number and I saw, I would definitely buy this game, there's no doubt. And I encourage everybody to go buy this game. Is there any other takeaways you want to add to this before we wrap it up? Well, for me, when whenever I have my final thoughts, I have, you mentioned it, the buy. I also have the try. Mm -hmm. So cry. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, where it's going to make you cry. You don't want to buy it. But definitely this is a buy. Okay. And go out and get it. So that is all. Thank you guys for watching our inaugural episode of Nintendo Guru Daily Reviews. Um, I'm closing out Bobby, the Nintendo Guru. Go check me out. All the information over at NintendoGuru.com. You can follow Tim over on Twitter at NeoPrime33. That is all. Peace out, Preston.